All of you are familiar with printing on newspapers, books, cartons, labels, billboards, and office memo. But can you identify the printing process used for each example? In order to recognize the processes, it helps to understand each method of printing and appreciate the differences in quality and performance. The three major printing processes used today are letterpress, lithography, and gravure. Screen printing, a decorative process, follows in their wake. Letterpress, including flexography, currently holds approximately 17% of the business. Lithography, 71%. Screen printing and gravure, 12%. In the 1970s, lithography has grown at the expense of letterpress. In the decade ahead, lithography is expected to remain dominant and gravure to capture between 20 to 30 percent of the total printing market, both at the expense of letterpress and flexography. And with technological advances, processes like inkjet printing and printing with a Cameron press may be commonplace in the next few years. Letterpress, lithography, and gravure all use some form of image carrier. The image is a representative shape whether an alphabetical character, an artistic impression, a photograph, or a combination of all three. Space between the components of an image is called background, or simply non-image area. Each of the printing processes is characterized by the geometry of its image carrier. Letterpress is relief printing. The image or printing area is raised above the non-printing area. Lithography is planographic printing. The image and background areas are in the same plane of a plate and the bond between them is maintained chemically. Gravure is intaglio printing, the reverse of letterpress. The image is below the surface and is represented by a series of minute wells. Finally, screen uses porous or stencil printing. The image is produced from mechanical or photomechanical stencils on a porous cloth or metal screen material. The processes also have distinctive printing patterns when viewed under magnification. Letterpress often displays a heavy, irregular ring of excess ink around the edges. In addition, the pressure required for printing usually depresses the image's outline into the substrate or printing material, producing an embossed effect. Lithography, which prints with no physical interruption between image and background, displays sharp, straight edges without embossment. Gravure shows no embossment, but edges appear serrated because the plate image is composed of multiple small wells. Screen printing is difficult to identify. Normally, it is characterized by a film of ink which appears coarse at low magnification. It may show a woven screen pattern, but some screen printing is free of these characteristics and is smooth to the touch. By reviewing the mechanics of these processes, we can identify advantages and limitations, and hence suitability for particular printing tasks. Before proceeding to the printing techniques, let's consider the method by which colored images are reproduced a technique known as full color printing or process color. Instead of matching the colors of the image with individual color inks, the technique reproduces all the colors of the original by means of three specific inks plus black ink. The three inks called process colors are cyan, magenta, and yellow. Black is added to highlight the other three colors. A different image carrier or plate is needed for each color ink. This color separation is accomplished by photographing the colored original four times, each time through a different colored filter, producing four negatives with continuous varying tones. These in turn are re-photographed through a half-tone screen placed over the film, which breaks the image into small defined dots of varying size. The halftone dots convey the appearance of continuous tones via an optical illusion. Large closely spaced dots are perceived as an area of solid coverage, whereas small widely spaced dots appear as lighter shade.
Finally, four printing plates are made. Letterpress, the oldest and most versatile method of printing, is the only process that uses various combinations of type and plates directly. Gutenberg's introduction in 1440 of individual type characters which could be composed as needed moved written communications from the calligraphy of the monastery to newspapers and books in the marketplace. The letterpress image is raised or in relief above the non-printing areas. The image is created by mechanical or photomechanical means from a variety of materials. Inking rollers apply viscous inks to the raised surfaces of the image carrier, which then comes into contact with the substrate, transferring a legible image from the printing image. The printing substrate can be any of a variety of materials. An impression cylinder supports the sheet against pressure from the image. The face of a letterpress plate usually has slight irregularities in height, which press too hard against the substrate in some areas, and not hard enough in others. To equalize these pressures, the surface of the impression cylinder is covered with one or two plies of tough paper called tympan, which provide a cushion and help prevent uneven printing. Sometimes patches of paper are placed behind low pressure areas and cutouts removed from high pressure areas, a practice called making ready. This process can be time consuming and expensive. The image carriers can be mounted on either a flat or a cylindrical surface, depending on the type of press being used. Presses fall into two related categories, platen or flatbed for the former and rotary for the latter. The substrate can be in sheets for versatility or in rolls for economy and high speed. As a simple versatile process, printing directly from original type or duplicate plates, letterpress is economical for commercial printing and jobs relating to reading matters such as general printing, books, newspapers, catalogs, and advertising. Color strength may be adjusted for various substrates by changing the ink flow to the image carrier. Good strong colors can be obtained with high gloss if desired. Color uniformity throughout the printing run is another strong point. Press speeds vary depending on the type of press, the substrate, and the job being printed. Because of certain limitations, however, the market for letterpress printing is gradually declining. The primary negative factors are the cost of plates, the time required for make ready, and the difficulty in controlling and printing tonal values. Flexography is a form of rotary letterpress. The forerunner of flexography came into being with the development of rubber in 1850. This antique molded stamp, for example, was used for labeling. Copy previously set by the expensive letterpress technique could now be etched into a master plate from which rubber press plates were molded. Copy changes were easily made and duplicates readily produced for long press runs. The compressible rubber plate contacted rough surfaces effectively and did not emboss or puncture fragile webs as hard type tended to do, simplifying the make ready procedure. This soft plate was used with low viscosity inks, which produced good color density, dried rapidly, and were economical. Flexographic prints usually can be identified by an outline pattern similar to hard letterpress in that a bead of excess ink borders the impression area. This is called a halo. Embossment, however, is not present. Flexography is an extremely versatile process. Most any substrate that can go through a web press can be printed by this method. Current applications include decorated toilet tissue, paperback books, corrugated boxes, grocery sacks, paperbacked foil, labels, folding cartons, plastic cups, and so forth. Fine detail was not expected of flexographic work until recently. With more careful press design, improved plate making, 
the arrival of photopolymers and more instrumentation, flexographic printing displays good detail and color tone. The second most widely used and fastest growing printing method is lithography. It came upon the scene in Munich at the end of the 18th century when Alois Senefelder found that he could print from flat porous stones on which an image had been drawn with greasy crayons. The gentleman shown is not Herr Senefelder, but Henri Matisse. Senefelder flushed the stone with water which was retained in the porous surface around the greased image, but repelled by the image area. When ink was rolled across the stone, it coated the image area, but did not transfer to the non-image areas. Paper pressed to the stone was printed with sharp resolution, giving the technique and the name of stone printing, or lithography, from the Greek words lithos for stone and graphene to write. The plate was planographic, with image and non-image areas in the same plane, but separated by chemical rather than mechanical means. Early lithographic presses housed slabs of limestone in flat beds to which paper was pressed directly. Lithographs became a popular art before the process achieved commercial significance. Soon after 1875, metal sheet stock was decorated by rotary presses which used zinc plates and offset the image to a rubber cylinder, which in turn contacted the metal stock. Soon, paper and board were also printed by similar presses, and lithography became known as the offset process. The soft intermediate surface, usually called a blanket, conforms better to most surfaces, improving color transfer and crispness of the image outline, and reduces wear of the plate. Modern lithographic presses use thin steel, aluminum, or metallized paper plates easily wet with water. The grease pencil has been replaced by photography to define image areas. On the press, the plate is mounted on a cylinder, which, as it rotates, comes into successive contact with rollers wet by a dampening solution and rollers wet by ink. The dampening solution wets the non-printing areas but does not adhere to the image area. The ink wets only the image areas, which are then transferred to the rubber blanket mentioned earlier. The substrate picks up the image in the nip between the blanket and impression cylinders, and an impression is made. Like letterpress, offset lithography is performed on equipment for short, medium, or long runs on either sheet or web-fed presses. Web-fed presses at first emulated letterpress in running wide rolls of paper with water-related problems of register control and image distortion. Today, few presses handle webs over 60 inches, but compensate for width loss with higher running speeds and reduced waste downtime and plate cost. Sheet-fed presses handle a wide range of substrates with good registration and detail. Roll stock costs less since it does not have to be sheeted, but is usually justified only for medium to long press runs. Recently, sheet-fed presses have been designed which cut stock from rolls as the press runs. Lithography's greatest advantages derive from its planographic nature. Inexpensive plates can be imaged with fine resolution on a wide variety of materials and require a minimum of press preparation. As with letterpress, color density can be controlled by ink feed. Lithography also transfers a thinner, more uniform film of ink than letterpress, thereby reducing the cost of the ink. The use of both water and greasy inks, however, is at the heart of many of lithography's problems. One is the ink-water balance. Too much water in the ink becomes diluted, printing gray instead of black. Not enough water and non-image areas may pick up ink, creating what printers call scum or background toning. Ink may also emulsify with water and cause color to vary from sheet to sheet. 
Paper grades are also critical, particularly with respect to the dampening solution. The process requires a fairly complex machine, with spoilage twice that of letterpress. All these problems, however, are overshadowed by plate economy, versatility, and good reproduction of multicolor images. Lithography's markets range from short-run duplicating to long-run printing of books and magazines, posters, labels, packaging, folding cartons, trading stamps, business forms, greeting cards, and advertising. The third printing technique, which is expected to show marked growth in the 1980s as a result of technological development, is called gravure. It uses the intaglio, or depressed surface, method of printing, named from the Italian intagliera, to engrave. Originally, the process used an image carved into a plate as a single well, or cell, while the non-image area was the surface of the plate. The Japanese, in the 3rd century AD, used the process for fish printing. A fish was scraped free of scales, leaving indentations which served as wells. Ink was rolled on, and rice paper applied to produce a fish print. Seventeen centuries later, around 1900, gravure was introduced. In the place of one well per image area, a grid of small wells is etched to hold ink in proportion to the color desired in the print. When printing is done from etched metal cylinders onto rolls of paper or other substrates, the process is called rotogravure. Printing is accomplished as follows. The plate cylinder rotates into a pan of water-thin, solvent-based ink, flooding the wells, the excess being wiped off by a flexible steel doctor blade. Dots of color are immediately pressed against paper, supported by a rubber impression cylinder. The ink, in effect, is extracted from the cell by absorption onto the paper. When rough and or stiff substrates are used, an occasional cell may fail to touch the paper, leaving a void or skip in the field of dots comprising the image. It has been found that an electrical charge field at the printing nip can assist in transferring ink from the cells onto paper, a process known as electrostatic assistance. The electric field acts much like a magnet, assisting the withdrawal of ink from the cell. The result is improved uniformity and color density on many paper grades formerly ill-suited for gravure printing. Plates were laboriously etched by hand until the advent of photo engraving. A recent German innovation, the helioclesiograph, promises a further revolution in plate manufacture. Cylinders can now be mechanically engraved with a computer-controlled diamond stylus. Reading directly from the original artwork, this instrument eliminates the photochemistry conventionally used for color separation and etching. Despite its high cost, the technique is expected to make gravure competitive for the medium-length press runs now reserved for web offset. Gravure produces quality printing, particularly suited for photographic reproduction. Applications include Sunday newspaper magazine sections, mail-order catalogs, postage stamps, wallpaper, plastic laminates, and all types of packaging. Its inks have no appreciable viscosity to exert destructive stresses on paper. Lightweight grades run well on wide web presses, which might encounter register problems in lithography. The inks have good color strength. In fact, gravure process inks are the most translucent and brilliant of the printing inks, faithfully reproducing full color copy, often without the use of black. Drying between colors is rapid with the solvent-type inks used, enabling the use of more ink stations than is possible with letterpress or lithography. And color uniformity throughout a run is high. Its limitations include the inability to duplicate plates exactly and high plate cost, making short runs uneconomical. Also, the use of solvent-type inks with attendant flammability and toxicity problems require stringent safety procedures. 
Despite these drawbacks, gravure is justified for long runs, over one million impressions, by good color control, sharp image resolution, compatibility with diverse substrates, fast press speeds, and cost advantages for roll stock. When coupled with an offset cylinder, as in recent press designs, gravure produces superior work on metal as well as tissues. Screen printing, also called silk screen, stencil, or mimeo printing, is the fourth major printing process. Considered a specialty method, it is well suited for printing textiles, wallpapers, irregular shapes like bottles, signs, billboards, and electronic circuit boards. The screen consists of a fine mesh material, either cloth or metal, stretched in a frame. A manually or photomechanically produced stencil placed on the screen projects non-image areas, leaving image areas open to the passage of paste-like inks. Drying is by simple ventilation or radiant heat. Printing can be done from rolls or sheets on a variety of press, and with a great deal of handwork, making it a slow and labor-intensive process. The world of print has become more sophisticated and precise. Computerized printing processes like inkjet printing are now possible. With inkjet printing, microscopic droplets of ink projected through an electrostatic field are aimed by a computer to print images on a variety of substrates. Resolution of detail is now as precise as with lithography. But electronic characters are reliably formed. Current applications include symbols on processed blank checks and general office printing. Since there is no printing plate to contact the substrate, the technique is adaptable to applications such as printing filled shipping cases as they pass down a conveyor. Technological advances further streamline printing with innovations like the Cameron Press. Instead of using a plate on a fixed cylinder, it prints paperback books with rubber plates glued onto a long mylar belt. The length of the belt can be accommodated to the length of the book, so that every complete cycle of the belt yields all of the pages for one complete book, allowing binding to be conducted online at the end of the press. A computer printer printing books would have the same capabilities to allow an automated binding operation online with the printing press delivering finished bound books directly to the loading dock for distribution.